because of despite despite this uh, despite this um, uh, difference uh, in volume and the bit running on this uh, it um, it led to the uh, utilizing of ECMO in a pediatric patient uh, since 1985, unlike the adult patient. And this was called response adaptive randomization. In this response adaptive, run, sorry, in this response adaptive randomization, uh, it uh, previously gained a popularity in uh, uh, with utilization. The intent is noble as it minimizes the number of participants randomized to the inferior treatment, which is a conventional uh, treatment and increase the amount of information about better treatment. That's why it is utilized in, uh, 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 in, in, in life-saving uh, modalities or intervention. Uh, response adaptive randomization can eliminate the benefit that randomization uh, uh, do the most powerful tool in clinical trial. And um, uh, unfortunately, this uh, response adaptive randomization has a lot of, of many problems have been raised at that time. One of them is the bias from temporal te trends as uh, uh, the, 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 the patient condition is changed by uh, time. And, uh, and the second is insufficiency to in treatment uh, effect estimation as uh, no, vo no volume equation between the both group. Uh, volatile in sample size distributions that can cause uh, this proportion of trial to assign more patient to an inferior uh, arm. And uh, last was the difficulty uh, of validating analyzing result. However, I, I can see that uh, this uh, problem is much better than uh, the, the, an the analysis problem that uh, done with intention to treat with the cross uh, over patient. The problem of uh, the problem of uh, resp response adaptive randomization also uh, um, uh, in the very setting which has been proposed, namely long duration platform trial and infectious disease setting where temporal trends are uh, ubiquitous. So now we have one question to be answered again, or need to be answered again. Do we need randomized control trial on ECMO? Still, we, do, we, we, we need that, or it's enough for uh, proving uh, that randomized control uh, that ECMO do work uh, at that level. However, in the guidelines, still, it is uh, uh, the evidence is uh, still uh, uh, not strong to uh, um, to raise the evidence. Sorry. So, if we said yes. Uh, I cannot hear you, Dr. Rahman. Uh, Rose, can you hear Dr. Ahmed? I cannot. Uh, Dr. Ahmed.
الو ايوه دكتور احمد وي لاست يو جو اهيد ناو سوري فور ذس اوكي So uh, again, coming to uh, our randomized controlled trial on ECMO, and uh, the question that uh, uh, raised, should we again uh, do a randomized controlled trial on ECMO, or that's enough uh, as the clinician and the researcher uh, think? And let's go through another uh, uh, evidence on ECMO, like the cost or uh, the inclusion criteria. Uh, or any many other uh, randomized control trend could be related to uh, the management or still we need to uh, increase the level of evidence on ECMO and uh, the rationale that we have to uh, start a randomized controlled trial of uh, on ECMO was that we have a breakthrough of the ECMO component and the technology with more compatible circuits uh, with heparin coated and efficient oxygenator, uh, unlike uh, the previous randomized control trials, all, including even the Eolia criteria, uh, the Eolia trial. Uh, and uh, we have now a proper understanding of the machine patient interaction and the determinants of uh, oxygenation, CO2 wash, and a lot of things that related to the uh, management. This could make uh, and that could be um, uh, rational to uh, do a randomized control trial and it may be successful even in the presence of uh, crossover. Um, the, also, we have now uh, an opportunity with the emergence of surge during the pandemic that may be provide unique design and the treatment for previous limitation uh, for randomized uh, randomization on uh, ECMO as we will uh, trying to do now in our protocols. So when we call the for randomization on ECMO, I think it is, uh, there is a lot of things to be uh, discussed. However, we have um, uh, two main uh, question. Uh, first was what is the optimal design for this randomized control trial? and uh, how to treat crossover uh, phenomena while maintain ethical uh, consideration. 28% of the during the crossover uh, uh, in the Eolia trial with 57% survival of this uh, group of crossover considered for the control. So we think that if we increase the survival of ECMO or decrease the crossover, this will lead to a, a, a favorable result. However, while we are thinking for optimum uh, design, we think, should we still maintaining uh, the regular randomization or we can think again to going back to the response adaptive randomization that used with uh, Partlet in 1985. Still, we need to discuss uh, this uh, extensively. And the cross to treat, as I told, in the COVID-19 pandemic, they provide new uh, unique option on the research level, like the platform designs that we will see, will see uh, uh, in this search. Uh, also uh, on ECMO, other options that may provide it uh, during the pandemic is the increasing demand of ECMO service that exceeds the available resources worldwide, while trying to provide judicious allocation of the resources for uh, 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 the population, we find that there is a significant group of patients will not allow to receive uh, ECMO or uh, get this service. Those, if we think this group of patients can be assigned for a research purpose in a randomized control trial uh, with or without the crossover for sure the crossover will be diluted uh, uh, too much according and this will be according to the ethical consideration raised at that time still right now we are discussing uh, all these challenges uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, finalize a very optimum uh, protocol uh, for success of this randomized control trial we are running it with um, the we are uh, running it with the, the expert in uh, Saudi Arabia here all the expert trigger in Saudi Arabia here and uh, internationally also uh, with the, the ECMO uh, network that's why <clears throat> I am appreciating your contribution to a survey on ECMO profession Saudi Arabia it will conclude and will include also 
uh, 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 question about randomization. And uh, I would be happy to receive suggestions that help us while we are building this protocol on my email. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Yasin and all, to give me this opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmed, for this excellent uh, presentation. Very uh, uh, nice proposal and uh, great idea. Uh, so I will open it for discussion from the, the audience. Um, and um, uh, I hope we'll get some uh, uh, good uh, suggestions and comments. I think the first question, I'll, I'll start with the question um uh, the acceptance of clinicians for randomization probably will vary from one side to the other but what's did you get some feeling from colleagues about uh, whether they will enroll their patients in a randomized control trial for ECMO versus no ECMO uh when, when we come to uh, uh proving an ECMO uh, to be an uh, uh uh, a valid uh, intervention in a rescue patient, we think that most of the uh, physician or clinician, they think that no need for randomized control trial and uh, ECMO do work. Uh, at, uh, and this is what we are seeing in the clinic, uh, we are seeing in the clinical practice and from the expert opinion, uh, uh, once we, we failed with the old conventional therapies that we have, uh, the first, the first thing that come to uh, any intensivist mind is uh, uh, the ECMO. However, still we need this randomized control trial to increase the evidence and uh, to be uh, uh, strongly recommended uh, uh, in the guidelines. And uh, also, it will open uh, a smooth uh, uh, running of other. Uh, uh, the trials to uh, that will help also in the literature. Comments uh, or thoughts from the audience? Uh, I I was hoping to have the chat uh, option, but there's no chat optioning, um, and we could ask people whether they would enroll a patient for an RCT on ECMO or not. I think it might be worthwhile, Dr. Uh, Ahmed, to do a survey yeah. about feasibility of ECMO trial and whether patient, people, uh, clinicians, maybe put some scenarios, whether clinicians would accept randomizing patients. And if the patient is randomized, would they uh, uh, enroll their patients? Dr. Mohammed al -Mani, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed, for uh, this nice uh, presentation and idea as well for ECMO. Uh, in my humble opinion, after what we have seen uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, and a lot of patients who went into severe ARDS, there is no option other than to go for ECMO. Yes, we don't have that great super evidence, but I think it would be hard for me as an intensivist to enroll my patient where I see there is a potential benefit from an intervention that would help the patient. So the other end is probably equal to uh, mortality. So I would be very conservative in enrolling my patient and in, uh, in, in randomized control. The other thing is, the other issue is gonna be the consenting issue for the uh, family. Uh, I think again, it might not be uh, yeah, I mean, feasible uh, unless you take the consent from the time of admission to the ICU where he's in mechanical ventilation prior even to need for uh, for the ECMO. This is my opinion. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mohammed. Very good, uh, very uh, an important comment. So, um, I'm just wondering if we shouldn't uh, separate rescue ECMO, which is a patient very, very hypoxic and you have no other option, while um, the other scenario would be an earlier ECMO. And I don't know what's Dr. Ahmed's uh, inclusion criteria for the trial would be, 
بس if, if the scenario that described by Dr. Muhammad uh, Mani, uh, patient really severely hypoxic and you have no other option, um, it will be difficult. But if it's yeah. if the question is about earlier, and yani moderate, some uh, you, you need to draw a line somewhere. Yeah. Um, it might be easier. That, yes, to question exactly that. What we are uh, thinking in uh, some of discussion that we will include and we will, we will we'll try to do a modified uh, all your uh, criteria uh, based on the discussion with the principal investigation with Alan Comp and uh, other uh, colleague joining this. Uh, uh, great trial uh, about what the, the the thing that they have to do uh, if they want to repeat this uh, trial. One of them was the PF ratio. The PF ratio of the of the inclusion criteria for all year was uh, 80 for three hours after uh, feeling uh, prone or other uh, conservative uh, management. However, we think that if we increase it to 100 or 120, this give uh, potential for uh, um, proper randomization for the cases going away from being a rescue therapy because in the rescue therapy, those rescue therapy are considered uh, those in the control group who will need crossover. And you want to go away from this group of patient by such way uh, to dilute this crossover or to increase the survival uh, in the ECMO group. However, for ethical consideration, we can't uh, we, we can't uh, 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 retain a service for a patient on the control group uh, as far as the treating team decided that he's he may require ECMO and with the criteria all the protocol will be proposed that this patient yes he may benefit from rescue uh, ECMO for that we will uh, we will uh, do crossover definitely sounds good any other comments comments thoughts from the audience so maybe I'll return it to, uh, maybe the same question to Dr. Muhammad since he raised this issue. So if, if the, what's uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmed uh, described, somebody is prone three hours, his PF ratio is 120. So it's not uh, severely, he's severely hypoxic, but not like uh, needs uh, rescue management. Would you enroll him in this trial or not, Dr. Muhammad? Your thoughts? Uh, that's a good question. Would I enroll the patient with a BF ratio less than 120 rather than uh, 80? Uh, I might be considering this uh, for, for the patient. However, uh, keep in mind that we know in, with the proning, they do benefit this patient for three hours, it's too early to decide. I mm -hmm. think for somebody to say that he is failing proning. Uh, we know that proning for pro prolonged period, 16 hours, that makes a difference, not for three hours. So I might say probably a patient who, who failed the two uh, session of proning, let's say, that might be considered for a potential uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, rather than say, well, uh, after three hours, it's too early, I would say, uh, to enroll the patients in ECMO. Uh, other things that uh, I might uh, suggest to my colleague, Dr. Uh, Ahmed, to consider is the uh, airway pressures, uh, the two pressures. If we have a patient who is the two pressure, let's say a certain period of time for uh, this uh, period of time, despite proning, despite muscle relaxant, who is failing, might be an ECMO having a role here where we just twist the line and give the line the time to recover rather than inducing further uh, injury. So I might go with a patient who's airway pressure rather than just going with oxygenation and ventilation uh, purpose. So I would not do it for somebody who's failing three hours. I would give them somehow a uh, longer time in the pronation and the pronation therapy to say that he is failing. Uh, probably the uh, pronation therapy. And I might consider the airway pressures, specifically the plateau plus minus driving pressure 
in consideration for going for it more. That's a great comment from you, Dr. Muhammad. Um, uh, yes, you are right about uh, this. But if I if I put in the conclusion criteria for a patient to keep a, a prolonged uh, prone with a two session, that may may lead me to uh, uh, again that we discussed it before, which is uh, the rescue ECMO, because uh, uh, now I I, I failed to compare uh, the ECMO between the conservative um, management, which is uh, for sure including the prone. That's why it was it was in the inclusion criteria of EOLIA trial. It was a three uh, hour uh, less than a PF ratio 50 and six hour less than uh, uh, 80 to give uh, a chance to comparing between the conservative management and this uh, new intervention. This is one. The second thing that you comment on, which is the uh, uh, looks brilliant to add in the protocols, which is uh, depending on more on the uh, uh, ventilator, maybe the energy power of the ventilator, including the PIP and the plateau pressure and the other uh, harmful uh, ventilatory uh, setting. This I think will be good if we involved in the uh, inclusion criteria. Uh, rather than rather than trying to do it more very earlier uh, uh, to provide the uh, rest try the rest of the ventilator and this will lead us to another uh, topics of randomized control trial is running running which is utilizing the ECMO uh, early in uh, in ERDS I mean the moderate and mild uh, stage of uh, ARDS away from the PF fresh less than 150. Uh, with low flow and uh, let's say like um, uh, a core CO2 removal to provide, uh, to help the ventilator to reach to uh, a safe uh, or ultra protective lung strategy, like the rest of the trial or void trial or the newly uh, 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 planning for a supernova trial. Uh, and thank you very much for your comment. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Dr. Samer. Yeah, thank you very much for a very nice uh, review and, uh, uh, and presentation. Uh, to be honest, I mean, uh, this is very, uh, it's very challenging when you have a life-saving, potentially life-saving therapy, and you need to find uh, uh, yeah, a randomized control trial model to prove that it works. And we face this a lot in, uh, in, in, in trauma surgery because you can't really randomize these patients when they're dying and it's not ethical to do that. So I, I feel for you that uh, once the patient is, uh, is, is, is failing every other therapy and it's rescue, uh, a lot of people, and you have access to ECMO, I think a lot of us would don't, won't hesitate to uh, just put the patient on ECMO to try to uh, uh, rescue the patient. Uh, the way that I, I, I would look at it is what you're trying to do is to basically test whether ECMO is better than conventional or standard therapy in patients with uh, severe ARDS. And then you have to get patients who you would not normally uh, start an ECMO and start them an ECMO and see if the outcome is better. That's, that's the real test that we want to do. Uh, but given that ECMO is very invasive and there are complications associated with it, I'm not sure if there is uh, equipoise now that would allow a lot of people to uh, start patients on ECMO that normally they wouldn't put on ECMO. But that's, that's the real question. You're trying to prove that ECMO is better than standard therapy. Thank you, Dr. Thamer. Uh, yes, you are right, but uh, still we, uh, while we are in a PIF ratio, uh, less than uh, 120, still uh, we, we, we have, uh, before for sure the COVID area, we have uh, centers that are providing an ECMO in aerial stage, even below PIF ratio uh, uh, 150. Uh, below 100, and I think it will be reasonable. A lot of people, or maybe a lot of protocols in some centers, they put uh, instead of 80, they put it uh, 100. <laughs> and this is that's what we are thinking for. That we have to do some modification of the Allen uh, criteria in the Eolia uh, trial to be uh, less uh, or away from, as Dr. Mani said away from the uh, uh, rescue, uh, using ECMO as a rescue therapy. Uh, 
still we think that with the OLIA trial criteria, we are going to uh, we are we are we are uh, still on the uh, risk uh, therapy. That's why we want to take to start it earlier uh, uh, to uh, better comparing this with the conventional uh, method. But we think that P fresh one one twenty it's not too 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 uh, uh, much away from uh, uh, the practice that we have been done before uh, COVID. Um, rather than this, the starting ECMO in a PF ratio of 200 or once the patient is developing, uh, uh, like in COPD patient, when he's trying to uh, uh, avoid uh, ventilation with uh, an ECMO also with a small cannula, 14 French to be inserted in the regular and running uh, CO2 remover. Still, this is our randomized control trial are running. So I think um, it's possibly to be done, especially uh, what, as you said, in, uh, in ECMO, uh, the, the, it's, yes, it's invasive uh, procedure, but it's more commonly visible now in uh, most of, on, on most of ICU, let's say, uh, uh, to have an ECMO uh, service uh, and easily to be uh, uh, adapted uh, with uh, less complication with, as we said, the uh, improvement and the innovation of the uh, ECMO circuit and oxygenator with the heparin coat and this coming, uh, what is coming more material, which is, looks to be uh, more uh, compatible with the patient uh, blood. So right now we have an ECMO patient running with prophylactic uh, heparin. So regarding the bleeding, uh, 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 the bleeding um, uh, complications that we seen before, I think this will be in the history. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, and thank you all for this uh, great discussion. Very, um, uh, it's, it's an excellent question. And um, I, I think the, as we go through the study design, hopefully we can address some of these questions, but I think it's worth um, doing a survey of the feasibility get the opinion of people about whether uh, the study is uh, patient, you'll get enough number of patients for the trial. I think the other challenging thing is the unpredictable waves of this disease. And uh, thanks God, the numbers are decreasing now. It's a lot decreased. So uh, you need to take that in consideration in the study design, whether this is going to be COVID only or um, ARDS of different types. For sure. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you very much and uh, appreciate everybody attendance and participation. It's been a great discussion. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.